Thank you so much for coming to my presentation. Uh, thanks Bernhard and Eleftheria for organizing this seminar series. I'm Shota from the Bank of Canada, and this is a joint work with Byon Jo Kim from the University of Alabama. So let me give you a quick motivation. Here we see several online platforms. They are advertising supported. So they provide basic services for free, but they show some ads to earn revenue from advertisers. Competition between these platforms is called the competition for consumers' attention or their, for their eyeballs. And then competition may encourage these platforms to make their services more attractive so that they can capture consumers' attention more effectively. But recently, there is also a growing concern about this platform's incentive to capture consumers' attention. The idea is that as a result of competition, these platforms or their operating companies may design their services, such as a user interface, in a way that it can capture the consumer's attention, potentially at the expense of their welfare. Sometimes people say that services become more addictive. The recent Stigler report from Chicago gives us some examples. For example, a platform may employ some recommendation system or news feeds which learns and displays the content users are most likely to click, even if such content is of low quality on other dimensions, such as the accuracy. Or the choice may be about the user interface of a service, such as the notification system, or the existence of like buttons, or maybe infinite scrolling, whereby there is no bottom of the page on the app like Facebook. Now, so these features seem to push users towards spending longer time on these digital services, but at least at an informal level, it's not clear whether these technologies benefit consumers. Some consumers may prefer to not have such features. I'm motivated by this uh, discussion, in this paper, we're gonna consider a model of a platform's competition for consumers' attention, in which platforms choose a strategic variable called addictiveness. And in our model, if the platform sets higher addictiveness, exactly consumers are gonna find it less attractive to join such platform, but exposed after joining, consumers are going to spend longer time or allocate more attention on this highly addictive platform. Uh, so we analyze this model and point out some inefficiency uh, another thing is we're gonna compare this model with another model of a price competition in which the platform directly charge consumers for their services. And we're gonna also consider some regulation. In particular, we examine what happens if we restrict the amount of time consumers can spend on platforms, a so-called digital curfew. And if time allows, I'm gonna talk a bit about platform margin. Now, so quickly that related work. So our work relates to the competition for attention or broadly platform competition literature, including the seminar works on platform competition and more recent work on the competition for the buyer or consumer's attention. And also this paper relates to the recent work on the possible negative impact of digital services on consumers like social media, including work by economists and legal scholars. And some of them argue that there, is some, there may be some problem on the platform's incentive to maximize and capture the user attention. Now, but I'm happy to talk more offline about this related work. So let me jump into the model. The model is uh, very simple. There are K platforms. K is weekly greater than two, and there is one consumer. And this could be a model of multiple identical consumers, but only at the end, I'm gonna talk a bit about heterogeneous consumers. So let's think just one consumer for the moment. At the beginning of the game, the platforms set addictiveness. Then consumer chooses which platform to join, potentially multi-homing. And finally, consumer allocates attention across platforms she has joined. So let me describe them in detail, starting from the very last stage, consumer's attention allocation problem. Okay. So suppose consumer joins some platform and attention allocation. First, 
As a primitive of the model, the consumer is endowed with a exogenous amount of attention, capital A. Uh, so this is an exogenous and deterministic, so this is an inelastic supply of attention. Uh, given some set of platforms, the consumer allocates this attention A across these platforms. So now, so let's pick any one of these platforms she has joined. And this is the how much utility the consumer gets from this given platform, say, small k. So utility from k is a u of a k and dk, where this u is a exogenous uh, known function, which depends on a k, how much attention the consumer allocates to platform k. And this is another endogenous object, the addictiveness of platform k chosen at the beginning. And so before going to the full attention allocation problem, so let me show you what assumption we impose on this service utility function, which is kind of important. So first we assume that this UAD is increasing and concave in the how much attention the consumer allocates to a platform. So the consumer gets higher utility by allocating more attention, but marginal utility is decreasing. U00 is non-negative, meaning if the platform set lowest addictiveness of zero, consumer's payoff from joining platform is higher than the outside option of zero. Now, what about D? Point two says the service utility is decreasing in the addictiveness. It can be negative for a very large D. But marginal utility from allocating attention is increasing in D. So there is a complementarity between A, attention, and addictiveness. So when we, once we take this attention to a given platform on the horizontal axis and service utility on the vertical axis, then as we move from low addictiveness to a higher addictiveness, then the overall service utility function shifts downward, but it gets steeper everywhere. Now, after setting up this model, I'm going to show you one uh, example in which application in which these assumptions uh, hopefully naturally arise. But before that, uh, let me continue the description of the model. Okay, so given this UAD uh, and given the set of platforms uh, she has joined, the consumer allocates attention across the set of platforms. So the consumer tries to maximize the sum of utilities coming from the platforms she has joined by allocating attention across these platforms given the resource constraint uh, that consumer cannot allocate more than A attention. Now, the, this problem is uh, quite simple since everything is a uh, concave, so the consumer equalizes the marginal utilities coming from the platforms she has joined. So this is the, what happens at the very end. Uh, now, uh, one step sorry. back. Uh, yes. So we have a um, clarification con uh, question from Luis Cabral asking, what is the fixed uh, a assumption required for? Because mm -hmm. he says that if A is fixed, then you are missing a very important dimension on, of welfare analysis. It's like having consumers by a fixed amount and doing welfare analysis on price changes. All right, so, so the reason we have this fixed A is mainly for the practical, uh, the analytical tractability. We wanted to do this consumers incurring the increasing and convex cost of choosing the total amount of attention, uh, which gets uh, quickly get messy, and that's something we are working on. And because we have this higher addictiveness leading to the lower service utility, so even for a fixed A, uh, there is some still non-trivial welfare analysis. But ideally, we wanted to do this consumer choosing both extensive margin choosing A at cost and intensive margin of how to allocate the attention. Um, hope this answers. All right. And then, okay, so one step back. When the consumer joins platforms, we do a little bit departure from the rational benchmark. 
we assume that this consumer chooses a set of platforms to join by misperceiving the addictiveness. So we assume that consumer decides which platform to join based on this fictitious, say, indirect utility, because here we are taking a max, given the addictiveness S times D of K instead of the true addictiveness DK. S is a sum number, this exogenous number between zero and one, capturing the consumer's degree of sophistication in the particular sense. If S is one, then consumer, when consumer joins, consumer knows the true addictiveness. If S is very low, then consumer underestimates the addictiveness, but after joining, the consumer's behavior is driven by the true addictiveness. Now, one step back, platforms simultaneously set addictiveness. So here, this, it is an exogenous assumption that platforms cannot charge monetary prices on the consumers. So this is not coming from something like that cross-site externality concern, like platform competition literature. When we talk about consumer or total surplus, we use the consumer's eventual payoff for given the true addictiveness, which I think natural. And I haven't talked about platform profit. For simplicity in this talk, uh, let me assume the platform case payoff is equal to the attention the consumer allocates to the platform K. But this can be relaxed in the sense that platform K's revenue can depend arbitrarily on how much attention other platforms are getting. But one important implicit assumption is that platform K's payoff depends on its addictiveness only through the influence to the consumer's attention allocation behavior. And we're gonna consider the pure strategy subgame perfect equilibrium, we can, which we can derive with just backward induction. Okay, so let me pause for a second to see whether any question. All right, so now I promised you to uh, one, hopefully I wanna give you two examples under which this utility being decreasing in addictiveness and marginal utility being increasing in addictiveness appear. But for the sake of time, uh, let me first give you one example. And I hope this also shows our model can be applicable to the context beyond the story of digital addiction. Uh, I, I, I think I saw a question on the chat box for a second. Um, yes. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Dan Savel says the consumer has the same as for all platforms. Why not have something like a signal of platform addictiveness for each platform? Um, I'm not sure whether I got the question. So, uh, yeah, uh, let me not guess. So, is there a way that the I can get clarification? Dan, would you like to? Yeah. 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 Um, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering. So, assuming I'm interpreting interpreting this right, S is the same for all of these platforms. So you're equally exactly. wrong for everything. Is there a reason why it isn't just some sort of signal of addictiveness? Where like, then then I'd get a different signal for each platform, and I might incorrectly believe who's more addictive. Mm -hmm. I'm more wondering because this type of stuff tends to smooth out a problem rather than actually. I see. I see. I see. I see. You right. So. So short answer is we didn't think of this heterogeneous signal about how I think about addictiveness. Yeah, we just figure this misperception being uh, identical deterministic function of DK is, uh, gives a lot of the uh, tractability going to the merger or the restricting the A, digital curfew. Um, so this is a linear multiplicative, but this can be any strictly increasing function uh, going below the 40 degree line. Uh, yeah, let, let us think more about this heterogeneous signal thing. Maybe we can talk more later. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so here is the example. Uh, I, I think this seminar series on the privacy and competition, and uh, this example might speak to it. So fix a platform, and suppose when the consumer joins this platform, the platform asks the consumer to provide some personal data. And we do everything reduced form in the sense that now this D 
is uh, how much personal data platform collects from the consumer. And a consumer incurs a linear privacy cost from giving up information can be from the intrinsic demand for privacy or can be some economic loss. So this C is a positive primitive marginal cost of pri uh, giving up information. Without personalization, consumer's base value for the service is WA. But after data collection, the platform can use it, use information to personalize a service, which makes the total gross utility of the service to one plus D times WA. Now, once if C is greater than WA, namely assuming marginal privacy cost is greater than the marginal uh, value of personalization, then we have this UAD decreasing in D and marginal utility is increasing in D. So the consumer finds it less attractive to join a platform that asks to submit more personal information. But given joining two platforms, the consumer is gonna spend more attention on the platform that has more data on them. That's uh, this example where we have this condition on UAD and marginal utility. Now, so let me go to the equilibrium. Okay, so we can solve this backward induction, treating these two consumer selves as a distinct identities. Uh, here is the equilibrium. So there is, there is a, exactly one pure strategy subgame perfect equilibrium, and all the platforms choose the same positive adequates. On the equilibrium path, the consumer joins all platforms and allocates attention equal and some comparative statistics. So this addictiveness is decreasing in the number of the platforms in the market, and also decreasing in this degree of sophistication. And I'm gonna tell you the intuition in a second. And then this implies that first consumer surplus and total surplus are increasing in the number of the platforms. Because by having more platforms, this is mechanically good for the consumer because a more variety of the service uh, marginal utilities are decreasing. And also these platforms are choose lower addictiveness, so which increases service utility. And also if the consumers, this misperception uh, gets reduced, S increases, then although the set of platforms, set of services haven't changed, but they, uh, they set lower addictiveness. So this leads, again leads to the higher consumer and total surplus. Now, two uh, takeaways. So the equilibrium is inefficient. In particular, although platforms set positive addictiveness, if they collectively reduce the addictiveness, then this improves consumer welfare, and this does not affect platforms payoff because this doesn't affect the consumer's relative allocation of attention. And as we got question early, this partly depends on the assumption that total attention is in, inelastic. So platforms are competing for the fixed size of the pie, leading to the conclusion that collectively lowering addictiveness is a Pareto improvement, improvement for the players. And the last comparative statics means either competition having more platforms in the market or quote, quote, educating consumers, namely somehow we, if we could increase S to a higher value, then this is good for the consumer and total surplus, and this does not affect platforms surplus. Now, so if this statement is clear, let me give you some intuition for uh, where, this, where does this equilibrium come from. Okay. So first of all, the platform faces a basic trade-off. If the platform sets high addictiveness, consumers find it less willing to join the platform. But as long as consumer joins, the consumer is gonna allocate more attention to a more addictive platform in a relative sense between two platforms. So platforms want to increase addictiveness so long as the consumer joins it. And we have the model of a perfect information. So in equilibrium, addictiveness is such that the consumer is indifferent between joining and not joining each platform. And one way to write down this indifference condition is consumer is indifferent between joining K, all the platforms, 
and k minus one platforms given the optimal allocation, basically symmetric allocation of attention. Now, consumers' participation decision is driven by the perceived addictiveness, S times D star multiplicative. So if S drops, addictiveness increases. So if S becomes from the sophisticated consumer equal to one to a half, then D star gets doubled. But again, since all the platforms do the same thing, this has no impact on the relative allocation division of attention. So this has no impact on the platform's profit. Okay, so finally, uh, with respect to K, if there are fewer platforms in the market, namely smaller K, then the consumer's outside option from refusing to join a platform is pretty low because simply there are not many other services to use and marginal utility is decreased. So each platform can set higher uh, addictiveness without deterring consumer participation, leading to the low consumer surplus, yet the same platform surplus. All right, now, so we pointed out the basic, uh, uh, showed the unique equilibrium and pointed out basic inefficiency. No, so what happens if we consider the different business model? So we'd like to compare this equilibrium with the equilibrium of another game in which platforms compete on the basis of monetary prices. So here, this slide summarizes the, this different game that we consider from now. So we do two modifications. One is that each platform can now set a monetary price PK. So this is a one-time participation fee that consumer has to pay upon participation. We also modify the platform's objective. So platform no longer earns revenue from consumer's attention. So this is an exogenous change of the payoff and endogenous choice of business model could be interesting, but this is uh, beyond the scope of this presentation. Okay, otherwise the game looks pretty much uh, the same. So at the beginning, each platform sets addictiveness and the monetary price the consumer decides which platforms to join. Once the consumer joins, they have to pay price PK to this platform, which is the only source of the revenue for this platform in this world. And then after joining platforms, consumer again allocates attention. And her net payoff is the total service utility minus the monetary price she has paid. So, and again, consumer may potentially misperceive, underestimate the addictiveness of the platform. Now, so as you can probably imagine, in this model, platform gets no revenue from attention. So it's always better for the platform to reduce addictiveness, which leads to a higher service utility. So then the platform can set a higher price to extract surplus from the consumer. So in equilibrium, we have a zero addictiveness and also this positive monetary price makes the consumer indifferent between joining and not joining the platform. And we have a model of perfect information or the, so I'm moving up this equilibrium description on the top. And our model perfect information and the higher price may hurt consumer, but this is a transfer and does not distort service quality. So first, if we look at the sum of the everyone's profit payoff, total surplus is higher under this price competition than the previous attention competition equilibrium. However, uh, whether consumer surplus is higher under price competition depends on S. Consumer surplus is higher under price competition if and only if S this degree of sophistication is below some cutoff between zero and one. And uh, intuition for one direction is uh, pretty uh, straightforward. If S is extremely small, namely the consumer underestimates the addictiveness a lot, then proportionally the platform set a high addictiveness under attention competition, which is bad for the consumer, but under price competition, they all, platforms always set zero addictiveness. 
So consumers, this naive component has no impact on their well-being. So as S decreases, eventually consumer is better off under attention competition, uh, sorry, under price competition than under attention competition. So this is the one side of the story. But point two also says if S is high, in particular if S is one, so that the consumer observes the true addictiveness of the platform upon participation, then consumer is strictly better off under attention competition. And let me give you a sketch of the proof for this part of the result. Okay. So what I'm gonna show you is when the consumer observes true addictiveness, consumer surplus is a higher under attention competition. So as I mentioned, in equilibrium, consumer is indifferent between joining and not joining each platform. I showed you one version of the indifference condition, and there is, here is another way to write it down. The left-hand side, UA over KD star, this is the consumer's service utility from a given platform. Because consumer allocates A over K given the equilibrium addictiveness, and equivalently, this is how much payoff the consumer loses by not joining a platform. But there is a potential gain of doing so. By not joining platform, consumer can save some attention and reallocate it to other platforms. If I do not join platform one, I can reallocate attention to platform two, three, and four. On right-hand side, is this gain. The consumer can increase attention from A over K to A over K minus one, uh, multiplied by the number of other platforms K minus one. So in equilibrium, there should be no net gain of refusing to join. So we, we have this equal. Now on the price competition, we have a different strategy space of the platform and objective, but this basic argument of indifference has to hold. So the consumer is indifferent between joining and not joining. So consumer's loss from not joining is equal to the gain of saving money and attention and reallocating attention. Now, right-hand sides of these two expressions are pretty much the same, except we have the positive addictiveness under attention cost. And this gain is basically the increment of utility from A over K to A over K minus one. And this, we have increasing marginal utility with respect to addictiveness. So the right-hand side of the first expression is greater than the right-hand side of the second expression. So in words, this means that consumers outside option of not joining one platform and continue to use other platform is higher if the star is positive as opposed to zero. Now connecting this back to the left-hand side, we can see consumer net service utility from each platform is higher under attention competition than under price competition, including monetary price. So for the sophisticated consumer S equal to one, their welfare is greater under attention competition. So in this case, there is a tension between total surplus and consumer surplus. All right, so this is a comparison between attention competition and price competition in our model. Now, um, let's go back to the attention competition world. So what can a regulator do? So in our model, regulator can do three things. First. Directly, regulator, if regulator can force the platform to set zero addictiveness, everything's solved. Or if somehow regulator can induce the platform to switch from attention-based business model to this price competition world, at least total surplus increases. But what I'm gonna talk about from now on is more like a consumer side policy. We're gonna consider the digital curfew. So what's the digital curfew? It's a, either policy or the choice to limit that how much time users can spend on digital services. People sometimes talk about this in the context of online games or social media. 
So in practice, for example, that Korea has a shutdown law, which is relevant to the teenagers and the online games, I think. Uh, for example, in the US, there is a discussion about this uh, proposal, uh, Social Media Addiction Reduction Technology Act, the proposed idea, which is a regulation and including some sort of digital content. It could also be from the individual choice. I may choose to install one of many screen time apps, which allows us uh, to some degree to limit how much time I can spend on say Twitter. Now, so there could be many ways to formulate, but as a first step, we are gonna consider the impact of the exogenous digital curfew as an exogenous change of total amount of attention that consumer can spend on platforms. And so for the moment, we consider this original attention competition model where the platform's payoff is equal to attention itself. So under this attention competition, this unique equilibrium addictiveness is increasing in the total amount of attention. And here is the intuition. So originally, the consumer is indifferent between joining and not joining each platform conditional on joining other platforms. Now, suppose A, total attention suddenly increases. Now, consumer gains more from this increment of additional attention when the consumer is joining more platforms because marginal utility is decreasing. So when the consumer joins many platforms, she can uh, spread this delta across more platforms. That means after delta increases, the consumer is strictly prefer to join a platform conditional on joining other K minus one platforms. So in difference condition fails, so to restore this equation, equilibrium addictiveness uh, has to increase. Again, this reduces service utility without affecting the relative allocation of attention. So the star increasing A means reducing A also reduces addictiveness. So once we consider the impact of exogenous change, e exogenous reduction of A, this is a potential benefit of doing so. But there is a direct cost of doing so in our model, which is lower A reduce, shrinks the consumer's constraint, makes it tighter, and this reduces the consumer's service utility for any fixed addictiveness level. Now, so intuitively, if S is very small, the consumer underestimates addictiveness a lot, then the platform sets proportionally higher addictiveness. So restricting A, which induces lower addictiveness, seems to be attractive from the consumer welfare perspective. So small s benefit may dominate the cost. Now, the actual argument is a little bit more subtle, but we can show that under the functional form assumption that uh, I showed you at the beginning as an example of data collection, uh, we can confirm this. So this U of S and attention A is a consumer's equilibrium surplus under attention competition. And so we can find a unique cutoff, a star, such that if the consumer's, uh, this degree of sophistication is smaller, then consumer's payoff from increasing attention, the higher A is, uh, consumer's payoff is decreasing with respect to the marginal increment of A. If S is above the cutoff, the consumer benefits from the marginal exogenous increase of A. So this is a marginal argument. Uh, we don't have a general result on the global behavior of this U of A. But at least the first part points to the pot there are cases in which reducing A can benefit the consumer when the consumer misperceives the addictiveness a lot. Now, another question is whether a consumer can enforce this digital curfew as an individual choice. Now, one way to consider this in a little bit more realistic context is to imagine the continuum of identical consumers and each consumer at the very beginning of the game voluntarily chooses this total amount of attention available to her. 
So each consumer can choose to reduce total attention from A to some number A of I. Now, but each consumer is atomless, major zero. So individual behavior has no impact on the platform's choice. So in equilibrium, all the consumers choose the highest uh, attention level, total attention. So digital curfew does not arise. But when this first case, S lower than S star holds, then consumers could collectively reduce the total attention, which benefits the consumer. Uh, let me also uh, clarify that in our model, the reason consumers benefit from lower A is not because this addressed uh, some behavioral problem coming from the consumer or not because this reduces the consumer's self-control problem. This reduction of A benefits the consumer in our model because the platform respond by reducing the addictiveness to ensure the consumer participation. Now, so this is a model of attention competition. And on the price competition, since addictiveness is always zero, and although lower capital A, lower attention leads to the lower monetary price of the service, but on net, the consumers are worse off when total amount of attention is A, mainly because this potentially beneficial channel of lower A leading to lower addictiveness does not uh, exist. Okay, so we pointed out inefficiency and compare a different business model. And I mentioned the digital curfew. And I think I have a bit more time to talk about a formal setup, setup of how to think about a platform's merger in our model. So let me first describe in picture how a platform merger changes our game. Okay, so suppose before merger in the original model, there are four platforms. Suppose they merge into two bigger platforms, so each platform now operates two services. Now, not surprisingly, we assume that this merged platform, so competition for attention model, they set addictiveness to maximize the total amount of attention coming to the services coming to them. Now, also we assume that merged services are bundled together. Namely, after the merger, if the consumer joins service one, the consumer has to join service two. And in general, we can write down any merger as a partition of the set of original set of the platforms, which can be one, two, and three, four in our this after merger market. So let's take any partition of the original set of platforms as given. Let me describe the post merger game of attention competition. And we are, we are gonna compare this equilibrium with the pre merger game, which is, which is what I showed you at the beginning. So let's partition this original set of platforms into this collection of subset of platforms. So M is a total number of merged platforms. And then each platform, small m, sets addictiveness. Consumer chooses which platform to join and then allocates attention. So here is a bit messy, but basically for each platform consumer joins, this is a potentially merged entity. So it operates service, set of service, services, P of M. And for each service consumer has access to, the consumer gets service utility of U of AK and DM. And so the consumer allocates attention across all of the services she has joined. So this formulation captures the merged services being bundled together. And on the price competition, things are pretty much the same, except platform charge prices and once the consumer pays the price, she can access to all the services operated by this merged platform. Now, so this description applies for any partition of the set of platforms. And, but for the tractability, we consider two types of merger. One is a symmetric merger in which there are, uh, for example, if there are four platforms, 
symmetric merger means that after a merger, there are several platforms with equal size. Or we could consider all but one merger in which uh, all but one platforms merge into a single end. Uh, we are trying to work on, but so far uh, we have to exclude, for example, merger of two out of five times. Now, so how, what's the welfare implication of a merger? So either symmetric or all but one merger. Under attention competition, merger decreases consumer surplus and total surplus. Under price competition, merger decreases consumer surplus, but it has no impact on total surplus. Now, consumer surplus part is very intuitive. For example, under attention competition, after a merger, this now bigger platform can get higher addictiveness because once the consumer joins platforms, uh, refuses to join it, the consumer loses access to three services and experiences a low outside option. So this allows this merge platforms to platform to raise addictiveness. Same for the price competition. Bigger platform can charge higher price without deterring consumer participation. So this leads to lower consumer surplus uh, under attention and price competition. And just to make sure, under attention competition, although this non-merged platform reduces addictiveness after the merger, but consumer's payoff is determined by the payoff of joining these all but one platforms biggest platform, so uh, net on net consumer surplus decreases. But price is a transfer and does not distort service quality, so only the attention competition has this negative impact of a merger on the total surplus. And so again, if consumer has a private value for the service, so elastic demand for the services, then in such a richer model, the impact of the merger would depend on the balance between the inefficiently high addictiveness under attention competition and inefficiently high uh, price under price competition. Okay, now, okay, so this is the impact of merger. Uh, now, so, so what I'm gonna do from now on is going back to the original setup of the attention competition. Uh, I'm gonna show you the another example application, which gives us this original assumption of U of A and D. So remember, we assume that service utility is decreasing in addictiveness, but marginal utility is increasing in addictiveness. And the application I'm gonna show you is more closely tied to this addiction story. And for that, uh, we have to review the two concepts quickly. So one is a habit formation. This is a roughly consumer's preferences, such that if I consume some goods, A star unit yesterday, and then today, I'm gonna experience the utility of U, but U of A minus today's consumption minus positive constant times A star. So this is a specific habit formation. So the idea is that if I consume some goods a lot yesterday, to get the same level of utility, I have to consume even more today. So this is one that we're gonna use. The other is a dual self model, which is a basically consumer's uh, decision is coming from the interaction between myopic self of the consumer and long run self of the consumer called doer and planner respectively. Now, so before getting to the detail, so here is what we do in the paper. So we show that this consumer service utility and relevant assumption can arise in the simple three period model of the consumer's decision problem. Uh, so this UAD as an example payoff of such a three period problem in which the platform usage service consumption exhibits habit formation over time. And whereas the consumer as a forward looking planner decides whether or not to join a platform, once the consumer joins, consumer acts as a myopic doer and interacts with the platform. 
Now, so we do not claim this is the most realistic model of how the consumer uses the platform, but this is one way to get our assumption of UAD being decreasing in D and marginal utility being increasing in D. Okay, so here is a bit of a detail. So consider the following uh, three period model. There is a part, so we are fixing the platform, uh, consider the consumer as a three period problem. So there is a participation stage, and after participation, consumer's decision is divided between into pre-addiction period and post-addiction period. After participation, the consumer acts myopically. Specifically under before addiction stage, consumer's utility is uh, unaffected by addictiveness. So consumer allocates some attention A star and gets utility U of zero. Now, after in the post addiction stage, so this is a two period, but we may want to think this as a relatively long time. The consumer in some sense builds addiction and uh, now consumer allocates attention endogenously for across platforms. A service utility from a given platform is A, attention allocated minus addictiveness times A star. So this is the habit formation component. So here addictiveness captures the extent to which past consumption of platform service affects the current payoff of the consumer. Now, when part consumer makes a participation decision, consumer is more cool down and takes into account this uh, stream of utilities. So long run, the utility which the consumer uses to decide participation is U0 plus, in case, discount delta times U of A minus DA star. By defining this as UAD, we get the assumption of uh, as long as U is increasing on a concave function, we get UAD being decreasing in D and marginal utility is increasing in D. Now, so this is a bit ad hoc, but this also gives us the con in what context our model may be suitable. I think our model is relatively a good fit when the consumer recognizes that once, say, once I join some platform, I cannot help using the platform service, I will get addicted. Because of this, if T is extremely high, I may want to avoid joining the platform. Although in equilibrium, addic addictiveness is such that consumer joins all platforms. In contrast, if the consumer is such that after joining, the consumer can cautiously use platform, maybe use some uh, screen time app, to avoid addiction. So this kind of context, uh, I don't think this is a very good fit. An uh, important caveat is whether platform usage exhibits habit formation. This is an empirical question. Uh, here we take it as assumption. Um, probably this is something we need to know in the future. All right, now, so this is the basic motivation based on a behavioral idea. And lastly, so, so far I've assumed that for going back to those theoretical results, I assume that identical or only one consumer. Uh, let me show you what we know and we don't know when there are unit mass continuum of consumers. So suppose there is a unit mass of consumers, fraction phi of the consumers, are S equal to one, namely they observe the true addictiveness of the platform upon they decide whether to participate. The remaining fraction phi, one minus phi, has S equal to zero. So these consumers falsely believe addictiveness is equal to zero. Now, if S equal to zero can be problematic because the platform may want to set infinite addictiveness, so we impose a exogenous upper bound, D bar. This is a maximum addictiveness platforms can choose. And the paper has a more explicit condition on how large D bar has to be to get the results or the uh, equilibrium I show you from now. So first of all, so we know what happens when phi is very high or small. 
if phi is higher than one minus one over k, namely the fraction of a sophisticated consumer is relatively large, we get the same equilibrium as a case of the everyone being sophisticated. For example, if there are two platforms in the market, k is equal to two, then right-hand side is a half. So as long as the majority of consumers are sophisticated, then we, the equilibrium addictiveness is de determined by the sophisticated consumer's incentive constraint. So the existence of naive consumers has no bind. In contrast, if S is very small, then to get the attention of naive consumers, platforms set maximum addictiveness. If D is so, D bar is so high that the service utility given true addictiveness is negative, then the sophisticated consumers stay away from such platforms, so they are excluded from the platform. Uh, one thing I would add is once we move from this relatively high phi world to the relatively low phi world, although consumers are worse off because the total amount of attention is fixed to be A, so this has no impact on the platform's profit. Now, the, what we don't know, we don't have a clear characterization, is a middle phi. But what we know is that if middle phi is middle, for example, if there are two platforms, uh, phi is below but closer to a half, then there is an asymmetric equilibrium in which one platform set high addictiveness, the other platform sets low addictiveness, and the naive consumer joins both platforms, but sophisticated consumer uh, joins only the low addictiveness platform. So it's possible that both highly addictive and not that addictive platforms can coexist in the market. Uh, probably it will be interesting to consider a more general distribution of phi or even S as a future direction. All right, so let me recap. We consider a model of competition for consumers' attention, focusing on the platform's incentive to make their service addictive. And I think how to model this addictive service is the most exciting part of studying this kind of topic. And we modeled as higher addictiveness, higher addictiveness being the service that offers lower utility, but higher marginal utility. So ex ante less attractive, but exposed consumers spend longer time on the more addictive platform than others. Uh, we show that this attention from competition may have some feature of the inefficient arms race. Platforms set positive addictiveness, but even if they collectively reduce them, they may not hurt platforms that much because it only affects relative attention, relative allocation of attention coming from the consumer. Now, to the extent that distortion inefficiency coming from the price distortion is not too high, then price competition, change of business model, this may lead to the improvement, improvement of total surplus. But impact on the consumer of different business models can be a bit more subtle, and under some condition, consumer surplus may be higher when there are free services with positive equilibrium addictiveness. Uh, we could consider several regulation, and in particular, we examine the digital curfew and show that restricting the consumer's total attention available to platform service may benefit the consumer. Uh, once we could incorporate some behavioral, like self-control, we may be able to get a different effect of digital curfew, which would be interesting. Uh, this is what I have. Thank you so much for listening to my talk.